This is still so fresh, and just thinking about it makes my blood boil. My hands are shaking as I type this, and I can't stop replaying the scene in my head. For some context, I, a 38-year-old woman, lost my daughter, Sally, two years ago. She was only 14, my beautiful, bright, creative girl. She died in a car accident on her way to a school art exhibition, where some of her work was being displayed for the first time. That day shattered my entire world. It's hard to explain to anyone what it's like to lose a child, but I imagine it's like losing a part of your soul. Ever since the accident, I've kept her room exactly as it was, untouched, frozen in time. Her posters are still up on the walls, her sketchbooks are scattered across her desk, and her favorite hoodie is still draped over the chair. Sometimes I go in there, not to change anything, but just to sit in the quiet. It brings me comfort, like a small piece of her is still with me, even though she's gone. That room is the last connection I have to her, and I'm not ready to let that go. A few months ago, my brother Tom, a 34-year-old man, and his new wife Madeline, a 29-year-old woman, ran into financial trouble after blowing an obscene amount of money on their wedding. It was the kind of wedding where everything felt like a performance. Over-the-top decorations, designer dresses, and food that no one could even pronounce. They had drained their savings and maxed out their credit cards, and now they needed somewhere to stay while they got back on their feet. Despite my hesitation, I agreed to let them move in with me. I mean, their family, and even though I wasn't thrilled about it, I figured it was temporary. At first, things were fine. They stayed out of my way for the most part, but I started noticing Madeline making little comments about Sally's room. It's like a shrine in there, she'd say casually, as if talking about an old piece of furniture that was gathering dust. Or, don't you think it's time to move on? Every time she said something like that, it felt like a small dagger in my chest. How could she even begin to understand what that room meant to me? I ignored her because, frankly, it was none of her damn business how I chose to grieve my daughter. Tom didn't say much, but I could tell she was in his ear. There were little signs, side glances, subtle nods whenever she brought it up. I could feel the tension building, but I kept hoping they would just leave it alone. I had no idea what was coming. Then last week, I came home from work and walked straight into a nightmare. The moment I opened the front door, I noticed a faint smell of paint an odd smell in a house that hadn't been touched in years. My heart started racing as I made my way down the hall toward Sally's room. The closer I got, the stronger the smell became. When I opened the door, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was like the air had been sucked out of my lungs. The walls, once covered in Sally's posters of her favorite bands and artists, had been stripped bare. Her carefully arranged drawings and photos, gone. Her clothes, her art supplies, Everything was boxed up, shoved into the corner like they were nothing. And worst of all, they had started repainting the walls. A soulless beige. My daughter's vibrant, colorful room was being smothered under layers of bland paint. They had even moved in some generic, tasteless furniture, the kind you'd find in a dull, lifeless guest room. I lost it. I screamed. I cried. I could barely form words through the sobs racking my body. What the hell do you think you're doing? I remember shouting, my voice cracking as I stood there, shaking. Madeline, completely unfazed, looked at me like I was overreacting and said, with this maddeningly calm voice, we were doing you a favor. It's unhealthy to keep a shrine like this. We thought it was time you moved on. I couldn't breathe. My entire body was trembling with rage. A? They thought boxing up my dead daughter's things and painting over the only space that still felt like hers was some kind of act of kindness? I told them to get out, immediately. I didn't care where they went, I didn't care if they had nowhere else to stay, I just wanted them gone. Tom tried to calm me down, saying they meant well, that they were only trying to help me let go. He even had the audacity to make me feel guilty, saying they were in a tough spot and had nowhere to go. But I didn't care. I was beyond reason. All I could think about was how they had destroyed the last tangible piece of my daughter that I had left. Since then, my family has been torn apart. My parents think I overreacted. They say I'm being heartless for kicking Tom and Madeline out. They keep telling me that they meant well, that I'm being too harsh, that people grieve differently. But how can anyone look at what they did and call it help? They ripped open a wound that will never fully heal. My brother keeps texting me, asking me to reconsider, to let them move back in. But all I see when I think of him is betrayal. So am I the asshole for kicking them out after they violated the one place in my home that still felt sacred to me? for refusing to forgive them after they trampled over my grief and tried to erase the memory of my daughter? Because right now, I don't feel any remorse for what I did, only anger.